Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's session, and we're going to get started in just a moment. Go ahead and radio, ready your audio devices. And we look forward to our resources roundtable chat. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Penn State Burke Blindside Chat Resources Roundtable. Come on in and welcome to our campus. We're so glad that you could join us today, especially because we would like to invite you to celebrate International Women's Day with us as well with our lovely panelists that we have here. My name is Sonia Delacuero, and I'm one of three Lionside Chat moderators working alongside Professor Dawn Pfeiffer Wrights and Dr. Ryan Hassler. Before we get started, we wanted to share that you should please feel free to submit questions throughout the program via the Q&A feature. We will not be utilizing the raise hand feature today. Now, once our presentation concludes, we will facilitate a discussion with our panelists. So we will also be recording today's session so you can revisit the topic or even share the experience with family and friends. Now, I am excited to introduce Felicia Nelson, who will be facilitating our resources roundtable today featuring the financial aid office and the finance office. Felicia. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Felicia Nelson. I am the coordinator of student activities at Penn State Berks in the Office of Campus Life. Uh, thanks for joining us for our part two discussion. Uh, today, we will be featuring some amazing women that are on the call that are gonna be talking about anything with billing, scholarship opportunities, and just here to help out with those questions for you. So I'm going to share my screen. Not that, there we go, there we go. So welcome, welcome. So I'm going to throw over to the introduction piece to, to first start off with Natty Matz. Hi everyone, my name is Natty Matz. I'm the Assistant Director of Financial Aid here at FERCS. Um, our office uh, pretty much does everything with financial aid. Um, anything to do with your FAFSA, um, anything with loan scholarships, grants, work study. Um, a lot of you get verification on your FAFSA. Um, we help with that. We also do veterans benefits certification through our office. Um, Carly is our staff assistant. She is our main veterans certifying official. She will help you with that. Um, our contact information is up there on the screen. Um, you can contact all of us. Uh, there are three of us in the office. Um, straight through that email, it comes to all three of us. Um, so you can email, email us through that. Um, that phone number goes to all of us. Um, uh, so you can call that number and any one of us can answer that. Um, that is our website as well. Um, you can schedule an appointment right now. We have those two methods. We are kind of working, we are currently working on um, the Starfish appointment setup, um, the same way you use uh, to um, make an appointment with advising. We're trying to set that up as well. Um, it's taking us a couple weeks to do it, but uh, once that is up, we will send an email out that we can do that appointment setup as well. And um, we are um, open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We are remote currently, all three of us are remote. Um, Carly, our staff assistant, will shortly be in the office Monday, Mondays and Fridays, um, but currently all three of us are remote, so you can only contact us um, via those ways to get uh, either phone appointments or Zoom appointments. Great. Thank you, Nettie. And now I'm going to have Ariel introduce herself in her office. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm in the Burstar's office. My name is Ariel Caretis, and um, we're located in Franco 125. 
And we talked to you regarding um, tuition statements, any issues you might have regarding the, your tuition statement or any bills that you see, receive after the initial statement. Um, we also in our office collect fees for our parking tickets, as well as if you have any um, counseling fees that you need to pay for. Um, and of course, we also collect your tuition payments. Um, our contact information or how to schedule an appointment with us would be to email us at bkbursar at psu.edu or um, phone number 610-396-6040 or bursar.psu.edu you could go to for references. Um, our office hours, just like NETI, um, is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and it's Monday through Friday. And currently, we are working primarily remotely, but I am in the office on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. to help with any questions you might have, any fees you want to pay, um, or, or just talk in general in regards to um, Penn State Berks and, and your tuition. Great. Thank you, ladies, for those great introductions. We're now going to open up questions and the Q&A feature. So um, we do have some questions that were sent to us in advance, but anyone on the call, um, if you would like to ask a question, please use the Q&A function um, on Zoom and myself and Sonia will be gathering that and we can ask that at any time throughout the program. So, uh, so I'll start off with some questions, but please feel free to start sharing those questions that you might have in the chat feature. Um, I know both of you kind of hit on it a little bit, but do you want to talk about more what you have been doing during the pandemic in terms of your operations? Um, I can go ahead and, and answer that question from our office standpoint. Um, we've basically been taking phone calls and, and um, meeting with students through the phone or answering any type of questions. Um, they might have through our uh, Bursar website as well um, that they email to us. Um, and Nettie and I, we kind of work closely together. If we don't have an answer and it pertains to her office, I kind of, you know, consult with her before I return back to the student's um, answer. Um, and then uh, we work very, very close knit together. But um, other than that, things really haven't been um, different um, besides being primarily through email and phone. It's basically the same with us. Um, majority of our meetings though are via Zoom. We have a lot of Zoom meetings with students and parents. Um, we do the same. We ask Ariel a lot of questions before we answer um, emails too. Um, but we do have a lot of Zoom appointments with families as well. All right, great. Great, great, great. Uh, Nettie, this question is for you. Um, this is about FAFSA. Um, when is FAFSA available and when will students get their financial aid package? The FAFSA is available October 1st of the year prior. So for 21-22, the, the FAFSA was available October 1st, 2020. So it's a whole year in advance. And for returning students, the, fat, the financial aid will be available late June, early July before this next coming year. Okay. And then how do students find out if they did receive a financial aid package? They get it in their email. <laughs> yeah. First year students did get their notifications already. Um, they got it early um February and we just were in the office last week having a printing and folding party um we printed a lot of paper <clears throat> and sent out a lot of packages so they did get it in the mail hopefully this week but returning students are all via mail uh their lion path emails all right awesome thank you Ariel this question is for you how can students set up their parents or guardians for to be an authorized payer and 
be able to get access delegated. Okay, um, authorized payer. Um, basically, you would go through your Lion Path, and um, once you're on Lion Path, you would click Manage My Account, Make a Payment, which brings up where you find your statements, and you can go on the installment plan, um, and you can also find your 1098T. Um, but you, there's an area where it says Authorized Payer, and you would go and fill out the particular information, who you want it to be, their email address, and then that person would get an email with a um, temporary password, and they could use that then to log in. Without an authorized payer, um, if your mom or dad are not listed, I cannot talk to them regarding your bill. Um, so it's very, very important that that be uh, set up in line path so that if mom and dad do call um, and they have questions because they pay the bill, we can actually talk to them. Um, the delegated access is, um, completely different, but we also need to have that done so that we can talk to your um, authorized payer if they should call in regards to any aid that you might be receiving on your bill. Um, if they ask an aid question, we would not be able to assist them um, and give them that information without delegated access. Um, and the delegated access is actually, there's a tutorial in Lion Path that all students have access to and you just um, go over that do what needs to be done and it's real simple. And then once we see mom or dad or wherever you have in there as a guardian for delegated access, we would be able to talk to them. Great, thank you. Uh, Nettie, this question is for you. Um, this is about scholarships. Uh, where can students apply for scholarships? So there are many places to apply for scholarships, but if we're talking just Berks, um, if you go onto the Berks website, just berks.psu.edu, and you look in, uh, type in the mm, type in the search box, um, scholarship application. Go click on the very first one and scroll all the way to the bottom and click on that link, and there's a scholarship application in there. Um, we actually just sent it out. Joe Webb uh, sent it to all the students and it is on there, I will have him send it again and we will post it on Facebook. Um, that is the Burke Scholarship application and that is due May 1st. Um, also through the student aid website, it's studentaid.psu.edu. Um, there are a lot of places through Penn State that you can get scholarships through. Um, again, if you go to their website and type in the search box scholarships, there's a whole bunch of places through there. There's scholarships through different um, colleges. There's scholarships through the student aid website. And there are a lot of different places throughout Penn State that you can get scholarships through. There's also um, outside scholarships that have nothing to do with Penn State. They're just different places that give scholarships and they, um, uh, they all have different um, timelines. Uh, they all have different places to apply through, but they're all outside scholarships and you just want to research them to see when they're due, what things you have to do to apply for them. Um, there's also the Berks County Community Foundation and um, their application is due in five days, I believe. I think it's um, March 13th or 15th. It's very close. Um, but it's the Berks County Community Foundation and you can Google that and their scholarships are due very soon. So there's a lot of places to look for scholarships. Teddy, um, as a staff member, I've often heard from students like, I don't qualify for financial aid, right? Um, so can you give me some speaking points to share with them? Because sometimes they don't even understand what financial aid is. So could you mm -hmm. could you share your thoughts on like when you hear things like that? That's, that's I could imagine that's the kind of stuff that keeps you up at night, right? Like people mm -hmm. not really understanding what financial aid is. Mm -hmm. um, everyone is eligible for financial aid because loans are financial aid, even though you don't like them. <laughs> so yes, everybody is eligible for loans. Um, so you want to fill out the FAFSA no matter what, especially because um, majority of the scholarships that I award, um, they have a need component, which means you need to fill out the FAFSA because um, the program that I use will not pull through, will not pull students through unless a FAFSA is on file. 
So there's very few, I know there's students who like, like international students and some students unfortunately cannot fill out a FAFSA, um, but a majority of the scholarships that I have, they will not pull students through unless they have a FAFSA on file. So that's the most important. Um, so yes, uh, fill out a FAFSA because uh, loans are aid too, unfortunately. Um, but right now, just with what every, everything is going on, loans have a zero interest rate. Federal loans have a zero interest rate right now until September. So if you're gonna need aid right now, loans can actually help you right now because you can take them out and you can pay them back right now with a zero interest rate. So that's kind of something you can look at telling them right now. And I have told students that right now too, because you know Stafford loans are the best ones to take right now because you don't need a co-signer. You don't need your parents to help you take it out. It is in the student name zero interest rate right now because of everything that's going on. Thank you so much, Nettie. Thank you. Um, and Ariel, to kind of uh, to, to invite you into the conversation when it comes to this point, I've also had students say things like, how am I supposed to pay my bill? I don't know how to pay my bill. Like, what are some speaking points that I can share with students or, or, or that we can share with our audience today who are joining us when they feel like they're they're overwhelmed and they don't know what to do. Okay, well, I usually send them to the financial aid office to see if there's any types of scholarships or aid that they might be able to offer them. Um, but then I, I generally go over, um, you know, have you taken all your financial aid that's available to you? Um, Let's talk about where you might be able to find additional aid, such as, you know, going to um, a credit union or a outside lender, um, maybe even if even asking your aunt or uncle or just, you know, for a small loan until, you know, you can get, you know, the money back, um, things like that. And, and we also have an installment plan, um, which you can access by going through Lion Path, um, clicking Manage My Account, Make a Payment. And um, usually before the first bill is due, I'm gonna use the fall as an example, August 22nd, you can sign up for that installment plan. It will break up your payments into fourths. So your first payment is due August 22nd, September 22nd, October 22nd, and November 22nd. Um, and that is linked to either a credit card or a personal checking account. Um, and then it, it takes it out automatically. So you don't even have to worry about making that payment on time and worrying about late fees um, as long as you have the money in the bank. So you have to have the money in the bank. But um, that's another option that helps parents and students out a, a lot. Um, and. So we do have other means of paying. Um, you can use credit cards. Um, first, when I first started in the finance office, there were no credit cards being used. Um, but if you can go on Lion Path and you want to, you know, add up some extra points on your credit card, you can put, you know, um, put your college tuition on that as well. Some options. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I've been hearing both of you talk about too the Lion Path account. It seems like it's very essential to be going onto your Lion Path account to look for some of these opportunities. Um, do you do either of you have anything further to talk to say about Lion Path? Are there some are there any are there things that students don't know about that they can access in Lion Path in regards to both of your offices that you have yet not mentioned yet? Just that it's very important to keep checking it. <laughs> um, verification is something that students um, seem to not see a lot um, and they let it go and they can lose their aid if they don't um, submit the information for it. So you need to check your lion path and on your to-do list, it will tell you items that uh, is needed by the Office of Student Aid for verification. Um, verification is something that is um, done by filling out the FAFSA. It's nothing that you did wrong when you fill out the FAFSA. 
it's just a process when um, you fill out a FAFSA, 33% of the population that fills out a FAFSA is chosen for verification just to make sure it's done correctly. And that's across the entire United States, it's not just Penn State. So whatever school you go to is the school that performs the verification review. Um, so you have to make sure that you send in those documents that are being requested of you. And if you don't do it, you lose your aid. Um, and depending on what types of aid you have, some of them can be permanently lost. Um, some, most of them you can get back, but depending on what you had, some of them can not be given back to you. And that's, that's very detrimental to some of the students that we have. Um, but you want to make sure that you're sending in everything that they ask of you. Sometimes um, you send it in and you see that the Office of Student Aid received it, and then it looks like they didn't receive it because it goes back into what you see as initiated status, which just means that they need something else from you or there wasn't something filled in correctly. So you need to make sure you're looking at that and you look at your communications in there as well. So that's a very big process that students miss. Um, they don't pay attention to it or they're not paying attention to their emails. So that's a big one for us. Nettie, that, that word verification can kind of be intimidating. So um, can you, you did break it down very nicely, but it, could you give me some examples of what some of these forms are that people are looking for mm -hmm. um, when it comes to verification? Mm -hmm. The biggest ones are They'll ask for parents' tax information, students' tax information, and household information, just asking who's in the house. And it'll be the tax information for the taxes that were used to fill out that FAFSA. So if we're talking this year's FAFSA, it's 2020, 2021. They'll ask for taxes from the 2018 year. So parents' taxes from 2018, whichever parent is on the FAFSA. So if it, your parents are married, both parents' taxes, whether they did them together or separate, um, if they just got married, it would have to be both their taxes from 2018, whether they were married or not. Um, if it was just one parent that you live with, just that parent, um, it's your taxes. If you did not file taxes, there is a non-filer form that you send in, and it's really easy. There's just two check marks, and you sign it. Um, and the parent household form is just asking who's in the household. Usually, that's the three forms they ask for. Um, sometimes when you send it in, it causes more information to be asked for. They'll ask for W-2 forms. They might ask for parent assets and things like that. Um, but you just have to look at the things that they're asking for on your to-do list. If you need help with those, that's what we are here for. So you just have to reach out to us and we can help you with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's kind of like, I, I believe I could be mistaken, but <laughs> um, they just want to make sure that everything is accurate that you filled out on your FAFSA. So when you're going through it, it's in everybody's best interest for you to be filling them out as accurately as possible. Right. And to make sure, because if you are eligible for Pell, you want to get the most Pell that you can. That's what they're doing. They're not making sure that you did it wrong to take money away from you. They want to make sure that you're getting the amount that you're eligible for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I second what Nettie said. Um, just pay attention to Lion Path. The to-do section is a big one. Your communications area in Lion Path is another big one. Um, if it says that you need to show or provide your health inoculation records, um, you need to do so because they will keep you from registering. The other big one is complete your financial responsibility agreements um, before every semester. Uh, if that's not completed, you won't be able to schedule um, and we, we can't help you out with that. Um, that's got to be completed by you and yourself only. Great. Thank you, ladies, for answering that question. Uh, we did have a question just come through the chat. Um, what if financial aid is delayed or changed? What is the status of late fees? Um, I guess I can try and answer that um, since late fees come through our office. Um, it would probably have to be a case by case basis, um, depending on why the, the aid was late or why it was changed, um, things like that. So there, there is not a definitive answer with that. It would be a case by case basis and we'd have to research it. Uh, 
All right. Well, I will give our uh, attendees one final moment to ask any last minute questions. This is all very, very helpful one. information. <laughs> oh, Sonia, go I ahead. Do, I do, I know, I know, I know your stuff. Um, but Ariel and Nettie, if you could just both take the opportunity to think about how long you've been at Berks and tell us a little bit about why you are still here at Berks and what, what makes Berks so special. Well, I'll go first since I think I've been here the longest. Um, I'll be here 20 years in October. Um, it's hard to believe, it feels like yesterday. Um, but I think what keeps me here is the atmosphere um, and the family that uh, comes along at Penn State. Um, everyone is very helpful, they're nice. It, 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 it's like one big happy family and everyone is here to help you. Um, even the students, I find the students are our families as well um, because they do come and help and, and ask questions and we're there to be maybe mom for, you know, the semester or, you know, um, just a helpful person to kind of help guide them. Um, and the students help us out too. We learn from them just as much as they learn from us. Well, since uh, this is my second round at Penn State, <laughs> I was here for four years, left and came back. So it roped me back in. <laughs> I've been here now eight years, the second time. Um, so yeah, basically the same thing Ariel said. Um, it's a family, I love the people, the students. Um, yeah, I love helping the students. That's my main thing. I love making, helping them get through to where they wanna be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh, thank you both so much. And uh, I believe Felicia is still with us, but I would like to thank everybody so much for attending our chat today. Felicia, did you have any last comments? No, uh, we have our final uh, roundtable discussion on this coming Friday during common hour. Um, we will have representatives for advising, learning center, writing center, Sonia's on the call, uh, <laughs> uh, counseling services and our student support services. So we will have Alexa Hodge, Tammy Meiselwick on the call uh, and Colleen Tilger. So that will be our last session uh, for the semester. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you to Felicia and our friends, Nettie and Ariel for joining us today. And I, for one, am definitely more well-rounded um, in my knowledge surrounding the Penn State Berks campus resources. So we'd also like to give a special thank you to all of you for joining us for today's Lionside chat. As you click out of the webinar, you will receive access to a survey. Please take a few minutes required to complete the survey to let us know what you thought about today's chat and perhaps even offer some ideas for future chats. And you're encouraged to reach out to us via email at our website and remind you to keep checking our website as we're always adding new chats. And as Felicia stated, our next resources roundtable chat will be on Friday, March 12th at 1215 p.m. And then we also have some other engaging possibilities chat is happening tomorrow. And then you can learn more about undergraduate research this coming Monday. So. Be sure to come back soon and meet with other faculty, staff, or students to learn about our Penn State Berks campus. And we're wishing you um, to stay safe, Berks and beyond. And we're signing off until next time. This has been the Penn State Berks Lionside Chats. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Nettie. Thank, thank you, Ariel. Nice thank to you. see you, Felicia. Have yes. a great day. Thank you so much, Ariel and Nettie. Appreciate it so much. Nice, nice job. Fun to see everybody. Yeah. Take care. <laughs>